We are into lesson seven now, home heating basics. This is a very interesting and very important chapter. Let me warn you one thing. This chapter has a lot of calculations and in the entire course, this is the most, I would say, calculation-oriented uh, chapter. So I want you to pay attention to this one. Basically, if you have a house and you will be losing heat from various places like windows, like ceiling, roof, or walls, or doors, you know, through floor, everywhere. So in this chapter, we will be looking at how much heat loss occurs and by what means you will be losing. Let's say here, let me explain you. Let's say we have this wonderful mansion. Okay. And um, we want to keep this interior at, let's say, 70 degrees all the time. And we have a little furnace that puts out heat. Okay. And that keeps the interior at 70 degrees when outside is, let's say, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat always tends to get out. Um, it can actually go through the solid walls, or if we have windows, it can go through windows, or even roof. And when you open doors and windows, air might leak in and out. So that's another way of losing heat. So there are several ways in which heat is lost to outside how much heat this furnace has to put out to keep this temperature of 70 degrees inside constantly can be easily calculated or known when we know how much heat is escaping. If somehow, ideally, if we can seal off this entire place without any heat loss, then once you bring this house to 70 degrees, you can turn off the furnace and it will remain at 70 degrees for the rest of the season. But you and I both know that that is not the case. So in this chapter, you're going to learn how much heat is escaping through various surfaces here. And obviously, whatever is escaping, that is the amount of energy that the furnace has to put out, which means we have to buy energy and put into the furnace in the form of fuel. So if we are losing a million BTUs like this through all these areas, and we have to get million BTUs made up from this furnace. And we also know that the furnaces are not 100% efficient either. If we need to get 100,000 BTUs or 1 million BTUs from the furnace, we cannot expect the furnace to put out if we put in 1 million BTUs. So if we want 1 million BTUs as output, obviously we have to put more in in the form of fuel. So to know how much fuel we have to put in, we have to know how much heat loss we actually have in that house. So we will be looking at residential heat loss and how to calculate that and what are the ways in which we lose heat in this first chapter here or first part of the chapter 7. So we will understand the mechanisms of heat transfer and also calculate the heating degree days for a heating season which is basically the number of uh, degrees that we have to heat our air. If the outside temperature is low, obviously we have to heat our air to a higher temperature or higher number of degrees, that's more degrees of heating. So we will calculate that, how many degrees we have to heat per day and per season and so on and so forth. And if we know that, we can calculate the heat loss from a solid wall, that is conduction heat loss. We will talk about conduction, convection, and radiation, those three mechanisms of heat loss. Uh, and also, once we have a wall, let's, or not all walls are um, the same. Some walls resist more heat loss than the others. So 
we define a property of a wall, a property of a solid material that tells us how much that material resists the heat loss, that's called R value. So we will understand and, and um, articulate the concept of R value here. And we can also increase the R value of a wall by increasing its thickness or by increasing by going to a different material and so on we'll talk about that also in here and uh, if we were to have a wall with lower r value which means lower resistance we would be losing more heat to outside and we would be requiring more heat uh, or more fuel to heat that place so we'll talk about the cost of various fuels in you know, for a given heat loss, same 1 million BTUs that we lose if we were to heat with natural gas to get that same 1 million BTUs, what would it cost? Or if we use electricity, what would it cost to get 1 million BTUs? Or if we use propane, what would it cost? But the heat loss is always 1 million BTUs for the same amount of heat loss, which fuel happens to be cheaper fuel or expensive fuel. That's what we will be determining here. So we will also understand if we have to put more insulation, we need to borrow more money. And uh, if we borrow more money and put more insulation, can we save enough through heat loss uh, to pay back that, that we borrowed, pay back that money that we borrowed? That is payback period. You already know the concept. And we will do some calculations to see whether it pay, whether it um, is wise to borrow money and put more into insulation. All right, that's basically part of uh, A here. And we will also look at part B, which is insulation and home heating fuels. And um, in this chapter or in this part, we will talk about various types of insulation materials and how we can improve a wall's performance by adding more and more layers to that wall. And um, also, if we have a wall that has four different materials together, for example, inside we would have um, a drywall that we could paint very easily and behind the drywall we have the framework like you know wooden frame with wooden studs that are used for structural integrity and between those studs you always pack some insulation material and outside the insulation material is not visible we'll have a plywood or sheathing outside and even sheathing doesn't look good outside so on top of that we put a siding, you know, vinyl siding or brick or whatever it is. So when we have different materials uh, together, you know, one right behind the other, they will all together resist the heat loss. So we will calculate the heat loss uh, resistivity or R value of a wall that has different um, layers of insulation and if we have that, you know, how much energy we can save or how we can cut up cut the heat loss etc and um, also we will talk about the efficiencies of the furnaces and how we can distribute the heat into the house into various uh, rooms etc different material different uh, heating systems we'll talk about that later on in the next chapter so this is basically a calculation oriented and problem based uh, kind of chapter or lesson and if we have any more difficulties in this one, I also added um, on top of this in the practice questions, a bunch of practice problems which explain you how to do um, how to do numerical problems. For example, if I have given here a bunch of problems actually using the formulas that we will be looking at here for practice. There are a bunch of problems, okay, about 30 problems or so. Those of you who are comfortable with the material can do yourself these problems and see if you got them by going to this answers page and where the same problems are given with answers. So you can actually look at whether you got the same answer or not. If you got it, you're happy. If you don't, what happens is you may feel kind of, you know, if you're lost or if you feel 
then what you do is you click on this third one here where every problem here uh, we have here uh, a solution actually like audio that um, I'm speaking to you right now with uh, I've made some movies again for each of these problems that will explain you like a blackboard or a whiteboard rather at this so I'm writing here So there are a bunch of problems like this that you can look at and most of the problems have solutions like this. So I've tried to make your life simpler. So this chapter seven is a two week lesson, which means you will have a quiz at the end of two weeks after the lesson is assigned um, and um, you take the quiz at the end of this lesson. Good luck.